guys when I was 12 years old. Um, I was talking about this the other day with, um, you know, trying to work through hurt and loss. And I, I've i built a relationship with a, a guy by the name Harris. Um, he does a really cool story conversation in Nashville. If you've never heard him, Harris the Third, look him up. Um, the story um, conference they do in Nashville, unbelievable stuff. And so we were kind of talking through, um, um, you know, like we go back to our childhood and we deal with trauma and we deal with life and we deal with frustration. We deal with hurt and we never figure out how to sort through that trauma because who's, you know, at 12 years old is going to be sitting down sorting trauma. It's just, you got hurt, you got pain, but you never work through that. And so when I was 12 years old, my brother was 21. We were best friends. Like how many, how many siblings are out there that, you know, the 21 year old is wanting to take the 12 year old to be his chaperone on a date. Like that's <laughs> not, that's not happening. Right. But, that was our relationship. He was like, Hey bud, you know, my dad's like, Hey, you need a chaperone to go out with this girl. I'm like, okay, come on, Nate, you're going to be that, you know, guy, the little brother. And so, you know, we had a bond, we had a a deep relationship and I was 12. He was 21. Um, he got in an accident uh, at work and, um, fell, uh, fell off a forklift and, and passed away in a tragic accident. My world was just shattered. Like my best friend's gone, my brother, And so not like not really realizing what I was sorting and dealing with, um, I got involved with my youth group and I just wanted to try to help people. And so I started helping people. And then next thing you know, I'm, I'm 19 and I'm, I took my first ministry position as a youth pastor at 19 and I'm helping to create and help students. And then I, I, I merge into that, end up in Texas. And then next thing you know, I'm, um, I'm speaking all over the country. Um, conferences, you know, thousands, eight, 10,000 youth workers. And, and I'm, I'm trying to help them. I'm, um, in, in a small town in Mississippi, running a large youth group, just, just plowing, helping people. But I did not have space or really realize where I needed to find, um, uh, uh, the wherewithal to work through the hurts. And so it wasn't until, um, I was, I think 36, we came to Oxford, Mississippi to plant the church. And my other brother, um, he was right above me in age, passed away and drowned in Lake Tahoe. And I was like, oh, my Lord, I kind of reached this point of, man, where am I? What am I doing? How do I get through this? And then I started kind of reflecting that I never grieved. I never I never walked through those moments of healing as a 12 year old. I just tried to deflect them by helping others. And right. I wasn't finding space for myself. And then finally, I reached this point where I'm, I am just, you know, walking into a potential nervous breakdown. I'm like, well, I've never healed from all these years, but I was so focused in helping others. And then I finally, like, it, it resonated. I'm like, well, I need to, I need to grieve and I need to walk through this. And, um, and that's when all of a sudden I just started finding that healing. Um, but I, I think that, you know, you gain that space and you find that healing. And the next thing you know, you can start finding yourself in a trust situation to where, you know, I called Greg up and I said, Hey man, I said, look, I need your help on this project. And I'm not (laughs) even worried about if you take and do something with it. (laughs) I love that. I love that because it's kind of like the, the heart and the brain connection and you put them together, you let them work together and you're right. It doesn't matter, um, you know, the outcome. You just walk in that. You walk it out. 